Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today you join me here for another race analysis and this is from round one of the 2021 Cal Speed Super Series. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video from the weeks before race in the Cal Speed Sprint Series, the wind conditions were absolutely crazy. With gusts of winds over 30 miles an hour, you needed to make sure you were in the slipstream in order to be quick on track. Otherwise, you were gonna lose over a second per lap. And in the Sprint Series, I did a decent job managing it. But in this super series race, I wanted to make sure I did my best. Overall, qualifying for us went really well. Qualified 33rd overall, which if it led me directly to the main, I would be starting the B main third. Not too bad. Now, in my heat race, unfortunately, I didn't do the best job, I'll just be honest. And we ended up starting this B main in 12th. Now, as far as my results go, starting the B main in 12th is my best start in a main race to date. So I was very happy with that, but I knew I wanted to get into the top 10 and just see if that's realistic because like I said this year, we're really pushing for good results. And so top 10 of B main was my goal. So let's get into this race. So here we are heading to the grid. And if you're wondering why the lighting conditions were so dramatic, two reasons. One, obviously it's winter, so the sun's gonna set shorter. But the other reason is in the C main before us, a cart flipped over and there was a 45 minute red flag period. The other important thing to note was that because of the red flag period, they ended up shortening this race. Instead of being 12 laps long, it was 10 laps long. Waiting for the flagger, he walks across. And there we go. Off the line, everyone kind of gets an average start, so that's fine. And so we got Heather Perrin on the inside, but she gets a bump draft from some other cart. And so instantly I'm thinking I'll go around the outside, a little bit of rubbing there. And I end up kind of staying in 12th. And all of a sudden I find myself on the outside for turn four. Thing about turn four, you don't want to be on the outside in lap one because everyone will go around you and usually someone ends up in the barrier. So what I end up doing is trying to cut as far to the inside as possible giving myself that room on the outside. And once again, we're staying in 12th, and you can see, it's getting that bump draft, and we're just staying far back. But boom, down the inside I go. The reason I did that was I knew with this layout of uh, new Ativo, you needed to get by early, otherwise you were just gonna be stuck behind. And like I said, you wanted to be in the draft of the fast carts. Down the inside on Monaco, passing three carts there. So overall, we're having a very good lap one. And so coming up to the horseshoe, um, my goal here again is just getting in the draft of cart number 55 up here, which I end up doing. Now I'm not sure what was up with that cart because as you can see there was already about a one second gap, almost two seconds there, and on lap one you don't usually see that. So I initially thought maybe he just got a slow start, but I'm having a feeling maybe it's the cart or something. So in my head I'm thinking alright I gotta get by because even though I want to draft off of him, if his cart's not necessarily that quick compared to the others, having the draft won't help. I go down the inside and I make contact with him there. And so I signal him to go by because obviously you don't want to get a penalty for gaining contact. And I'm noticing I keep lifting and he's not getting by. So I'm really trying to slow down to let him by, but obviously I don't want to let the people behind me come because they're just going to train their way through. So again, I'm just lifting, trying not to hit him. And then there we go for the inside of Monaco and we get that easy overtake. Now, from here, I'm able to try to pull a little bit of a buffer gap but again, I'm signaling for the bump draft because I know, as you can already see, there's a decent gap to the guys in front. We're talking almost five seconds there. Now here you can see, as usual in the B main, very aggressive drivers. But once again, I'm signaling for that bump draft because I know we need to push forward. Cart 41 giving me a nice push. But as you can see, the gap is crazy and we're only on lap three. And so at this point, I'm thinking, let's just bump draft, get our way through. And you can already see two carts right here going 41 takes a look down the inside, doesn't go for it. But at this point, I'm thinking, I'm not really sure if we're gonna catch him. And then all of a sudden I realize I'm kind of out there by myself. Now, I had a situation like this in the sprint series and when you end up in a situation like this, you just gotta stay calm because there's nothing you can do. Now coming out of the Monaco hairpin a lap later, this was a really interesting incident. So I didn't cover the inside. As you can see, cart 51 gets by. And I wanna go frame by frame here because if you take a look, he jumps the curb, hits me, and then look at all these positions I lose. Reason I lost them, if you get forced wide in the horseshoe turn, there's a lot less grip and you're just gonna be slower. Simple as that. So, taking a look at this, you can see he's on the inside, coming down. And so at this point I'm thinking, I'll give him a little room just in case something happens. Something did happen, of course. I just didn't give him enough room to really benefit me. And what ends up happening, I mean, you can see he's really on the inside. He's gonna go fully over that curb and what ends up happening, if you look at the shape of the curb, you have this bit here, which is sort of, um, it's not flat, it's definitely banked, but it's not a crazy bank. 
but on the back side, it's a much steeper bank, and he gets his left wheel on that, which just essentially acts as a ramp, sending the car straight up, and you can see he actually, in this shot right here, he has the cart fully airborne. Both rear wheels are off, and both front wheels are off. So what ends up happening? Well, the cart continues going straight, except that ends up hitting me, and then forcing me wide. So, nothing I can do there. So a little frustrated at this point, but I know again, based on how close everyone is, I can easily make these positions back up. So coming up the straightaway, create a little bit of a buffer gap to hopefully get him at turn two and three, and then once again, more contact, and then I end up bumping the back there, and then now we fall back into either 12th or 13th. So I can tell our pace is already quicker here as we're constantly on the bumper of the other carts. So I'm just thinking, let's find a good overtaking zone. For me, I was very comfortable overtaking in the Monaco hairpin. Hard braking zone, down the inside, and if you can defend the inside for the horseshoe turn, it's a very good spot to overtake at. Now, because of the dramatic lighting conditions, what ended up happening is as you were going to the new Ativa hairpin, you had the sun right in your eyes, and the second you had this direction change, you almost wish you were running a clear visor. And so, with the intense light, it was really interesting. Here I'm tucking my head down, trying to do that DRS effect, which apparently, according to some British study, gets you about half a tenth per lap if you do it properly. Was it actually gaining me any time? No idea. Reason I did it was I was thinking maybe with the wind conditions I could do something. But the other reason, I was just simply bored with no one around me, so why not? Once again, going up the straightaway, I find myself coming right back onto that number 55 cart, and I know I gotta get by him. So I'm a little aggressive here, trying to send it in turn one, straight over the curb, and I just don't get a good exit. Simple as that. He gets by me again. I'm gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna go for it in turn four. But again, he carries more speed in, I hop the curb. And the thing about the curbs at turn one and turn four, they're two decently similar curbs. And if you jump them on these carts, you just, it's not gonna benefit what benefit you well. It just upsets the cart too much. So here's cart 36 driven by James Leeser. And I've had an interesting history with him on track. In round eight of the Super Series last year, we sort of crashed into each other in the technical complex. And that was not very good. Completely my fault now I look at the footage, but I know we're gonna have a good battle with him. Takes a look at me. I just have more speed going up the hill. I get by him, but then he swoops right back around. And so through here, I'm like, all right, this is two laps to go. So we're gonna battle it out for this position because we're never gonna catch the guys in front. And so I'm following him as closely as I can because I wanna get by him. I really wanna make up for that uh, incident we had last year. Where our pace was pretty close this race. So, you know, one mistake, someone was gonna get by. And that's what made this battle really exciting. So in the horseshoe turn, I'm able to get on his bumper and I'm not passing him into Long Beach because he could just get me right back up the straightaway. So again, through Long Beach, getting right back on his bumper. And I decided to give him a little push here. And the reason for that is, like I said, I failed to overtake in turn one, so I'm not gonna try it again. If you don't do it, it's just not worth it. Let's be honest. And again, right on his bumper for turn four, but he very smartly positions himself on the inside for turn four. So I can't overtake him there. Going back down the hill, fully over the curb there, which uh, was interesting, let's just say. He was definitely racing me hard. And then going through Nuovo, much more speed for me. But again, can't really get by, right in his bumper. Then down the back straightaway, gives me a little bit of a squeeze, but I have plenty of room to go down the inside at Monaco. Touch wheels there, but look at this. I don't close the, um, I don't close the gap here. So he's now on the inside for horseshoe. And so again, I position myself right behind his cart because I know I just need to get by him. So through Long Beach here, again, just staying behind him. But this time I'm deciding I'm gonna go for the overtake. And then cart 47 gives us a very nice push. And this is the last lap, of course, so now I'm by. And that's where I thought, all right, this is where I'm gonna finish. But little did I know what happened ahead. So I could see the flagger up here waving the yellow flag and I'm thinking, all right, something happened. Now, I slowed down, but I don't wanna slow down too much because people forget with the yellow flag you're supposed to slow down. I didn't want everyone to overtake me. Put my arm up and there you can see Quinn Allen Riley and another driver in the tire wall. So it turns out there was someone behind Quinn and they ended up crashing into the wall together. And so that was the end of his race. And this now promoted me up into eighth place. So I was in that top 10. Another fun bit hit a little uh, piece of the barrier right there, which goes flying. Always fun with the 360 camera to see that. And this is where I stay for the race in P8. This is the very last lap. So there we go. That's the checkered flag. I decided to post with the camera, not sure what hand to do. So I end up switching, but anyways, yeah. P12 to P8, 
Not a bad race at all, I have to say. For the first race of the year, quite happy with that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And as always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.